the first of the so-called minor tranquilizers. But to sell their new class of psychiatric drugs to the public, psychiatrists and drug companies first had to reposition them as working on a disease process, rather than just as sedating or restraining agents for undesirable human behaviors, as Thorazine had been. To do this, they began a marketing blitz on their colleagues, placing print advertisements in professional publications, such as the American Journal of Psychiatry. Prominent psychiatrists were then hired to spread the word to the rest of the medical field. Few knew that Nathan Klein, one of the most influential psychiatrists of his time, was being paid by the drug industry when he proclaimed that tranquilizers such as Milltown were equal in importance to the introduction of atomic energy, if not more so. Free samples were shipped to psychiatrists and physicians to get patients started on the drug. A year later, the marketing rollout hit the public and Milltown soon became the first blockbuster psychiatric drug, not just for those incarcerated in an insane asylum, but for the mainstream public. Milltown was marketed to pregnant women, stay-at-home moms, and busy white-collar office workers, who called it executive excedrin. So it opened up a door for community-based mental health, uh, whereby the psychiatrist could then have a role so uh, they became very uh, closely associated with the pharmaceutical industry. And they were demanding as well to come up with better things for mom and pop and the executive and uh, the superstar uh, Hollywood actress or actor. And uh, soon, you know, it became a fashion to take some of these medications. By the 1960s, 36 million prescriptions for Milltown had been filled in the United States alone, accounting for $200 million in sales, an amount unheard of at that time for any psychiatric drug. Milltown's success led to the introduction of many more psychiatric drugs aimed at the general public throughout the 1950s and 60s. One such drug was Valium. Launched to the delirious acclaim of psychiatrists and the press, Valium was so widely prescribed to stressed out housewives that it even acquired a nickname, Mother's Little Helper. Lost amidst this hoopla was strong and well-documented early evidence that tranquilizers also came with serious, life-changing side effects. Milltown, for example, was soon labeled by the 1962 President's Advisory Commission on Narcotic and Drug Abuse as more dangerous and addictive even than cocaine or methamphetamine and fell quickly out of use. But the psychiatric community ignored these warnings. Pandora's box had been opened, and with their new pills, they were no longer caretakers of the insane. They were real doctors administering drugs to patients and their backward logic was, if the drugs did indeed shut down mental symptoms, weren't they therefore addressing some physical disease in the brain? Within years, this reasoning enabled psychiatry to undergo a profound change. Psychiatrists were no longer caretakers, they were doctors. Mental complaints were no longer psychological, they were symptoms of disease. And to treat them, psychiatrists wrote them prescriptions. It's all about money. The use of uh, writing prescriptions and uh, having an income from people coming in and getting their prescriptions and this, that, and the other is what uh, revived the psychiatric community. It was the thing that put them back where they were earning money again. Business was going so well that a group of prominent psychiatrists met in Puerto Rico in 1967 to lay out the expansion of psychotropic drug use for the year 2000. According to organizing psychiatrist Dr. Wayne O. Evans, Psychomedication is now an accepted way of life, and the search for the just right pill has become the goal for many people. By the early 1980s, Valium had become the most widely prescribed drug of any kind in the Western world. In 1978 alone, nearly 2.3 billion tablets sold, enough to medicate one half of the world population. The business of psychotropic drugging had gotten so out of hand that at a 1979 hearing on the use and abuse of benzodiazepines, one United States senator commented that... The whole pitch appears to be to, to sell, market, sell, and market. 
but bigger things were yet to come. The next